Hello everybody and welcome to One Player Today. Another PNP One Player P and Pop Pencil Park is on the table today and this well I've got two issues. One, I'm not using a pencil. Two, we're not actually building a park. We are building a city with parks in it, admittedly, but semantics aside, this is a fantastic little roll and write. Just got an update um, in May with two new maps. We're playing one of those today, which is Pittsburgh. I played the other one last night. It went moderately, moderately well, and I'll tell you what threw me off, because there's a couple of little twists in this one. The main twist being that we have a points goal, yes, and of course we're rolling, you know, like a lot of roll and writes, we're rolling a dice, finding out what symbols we're going to draw, drawing them on the map and arranging them in certain configurations to make points. Very good, very familiar. But we have a points goal, however, anything under or over the points goal, unfortunately, um, does not... I suppose result in us becoming mayor of Pittsburgh, and that is our that is our aim. We we want to we want to rule over this fine fine city. So what I did is go all out, or it was went all out to score as many points as possible, and ended up with I think yeah a hundred something when my target was actually eighty, um, and I ended up over this end of this kind of little bar curve, if you will. So we're going to try and avoid that today. We're going to try and score 60 points in Pittsburgh to get us elected to the mayoral seat. And again, yes, we're going to do that by rolling some dice. Shall we get going? Yes, we shall. Let's go. On a turn of Pencil Park, we are going to roll three D6s. We are going to choose two of them to add together and one of them to show us the shape of the zone that we are going to draw. Um, I've kind of done myself a disservice by using numbered dice rather than pipped dice because the way that the zones are shaped, I'll show you here on the rule sheet, is actually reflective of the pip arrangement. So you see, for example, five gets arranged like this, four like so, three across, two like that. So uh, I've done myself a bit of a disservice, but I think I'll be able to figure it out. Regardless, that's um, going to be the shape that we are going to draw, and then this is going to be the type of zone. So I've only really got one choice here because I can either add 5 and 5 or 4 and 5, or indeed 4 and 5, um, to make either 9 or 10. And that, that designates that I'm going to draw an industry zone. The rules of industry. We're going to score one point for each industry zone in the largest group of industry zones. However, any industry zone outside of that largest group loses us points so we want to try and keep all of our industry together now the downside with that is if i were to draw a five um let me just let me let me let me let me make an example over here if i were to draw a five <laughs> what have i done if i were to draw a five in this grid here um and let's say these shaded cells are the industry unfortunately that would count as five separate zones they're not adjacent and thus all of them would be considered pollution um, except for one so I want to I want to use my four essentially that it was a long way around of saying I want to use my four and I want to keep all my my industry together I'm gonna throw them somewhere in the corner um, and this is really where my art artistic skills are gonna be on display for everyone to see the other way we're going to score points in this game is by surrounding these areas of, I suppose, natural beauty or areas of uh, kind of natural reserve. So we want to surround those with zones. We're also going to lose points if we don't zone in these numbered sections. Um, and these zones, um, these two need to be equal, these three need to be different. So we've added five and five, we've got to ten, we've drawn, f and then we've taken four, we've drawn four industry, and there we go. Next turn. I certainly need to be doing a better job this game of keeping track of my points so that I don't overshoot. So I'm going to try and do that, um, but my short-term memory is, uh, well, if you've watched the channel before, you'll know it's quite terrible. <laughs> this is going to be very difficult for me to keep track of. But right now we've got four points. We'll keep it at that. Again, we've got a double five. Um, so we're either going to build a another industry zone of size six which 
I suppose wouldn't be a terrible idea. And um, we can build it up top here, and we'd go up to ten points. Or we can build, um, we can add together five and six and build a five shape school zone. We have to have a primary school in order to make a high school, and a high school in order to make a university. A primary school is two zones together, a high school is three, four, five, or six zones together, and a university is anything bigger than that. And we score points based on the size. Now, again, this five shape is not ideal because it's going to give me five individual zones, which I'll then have to fill up later, and I'm not really keen on that. So let's do another let's do another round of industry, I suppose, and we'll do we'll just throw it all in this giant corner and um, and hope that our citizens are just okay with you know basically living in uh, Victorian England. All right, we've got a six, a two, and a three, so we can either. Again, we've got some choices. We can either add two and three together to make five, get a monument zone. We score two for each group of monument zones. So no matter what the size is, um, it only scores two points. Now, that would be a great candidate for that five, because again, we get five individual groups. One size six monument zone, not as great, because it's just kind of a waste of space. So let's think. We can build some more industry. I'm not going to do that. Um, or we can build a civic zone. So the civic zone, um, the way the civic zone works is it essentially increases the scoring of our residential zones. We haven't built any of those yet, but just in case we do, that's what I'm going to go for. And I'm going to arrange it. So three gets arranged in that kind of like uh, diagonal line, like you would see on the, on the dice pips. So I'm going to place it up here and craftily kind of neighbor or border three of these natural reserve spaces all at once. And I think that's a pretty good I think that was a pretty good shout. We've got a four up here, sorry about that, and a two. So we've either got more civic zones or we've got business zones. So let's do a business zone. Um, we don't need to really build more civic zones than we have residential, and again we don't have any residential yet. So So we've got a business zone we score three points for each group of business zones that are a unique quantity. So if we've got a group of one, a group of two, a group of three, we'd score three points for each of those. However, if we had two groups of two, then we wouldn't score any. Okay, I think that's clear. So business zones, I suppose, um, let's throw it somewhere. I'm going to throw it here, and we're going to do... A four shape, so that's basically a square, and we're gonna we're gonna hit two of these. Again, I want to be trying to keep track of my points tally as I go along. So I've already scored what ten points for industry here so far. I'm gonna score three points for this. So that's thirteen. We haven't scored any points for this yet, so. Yeah. Another double. Getting very lucky with those doubles. Um, Alright, so again we can build a monument, or we can build another business zone of size 2. Um, yeah, okay. I can't build it here, unfortunately, because this cannot contain a 6, 7, or an 8, so a business zone, a residential zone, or a civic zone. But I could build it here, um, and that would create me one business zone of size 5, because again these are adjacent. And if I fill in the other one of the two, then it's a separate business zone of size one, or business group of size one. So we've got two business groups so far, scoring us six points. Okay. I hope you're following this. I, I'm, I think it's another double. Very interesting. Um, these dice seem to be full of magnets. So, all right. We've got parks to build, or we've got monuments to build. So we can either build a single-sized monument, oops, or a three-sized park, um, a park zone, if it's adjacent to a blank space or a reserve, it scores you one point. If it's adjacent to both, it scores you three points. So I suppose I could build a three-park right here, couldn't I? And that would get me at least possibly, possibly seven points. Um, so this is supposed to be like a leaf. Yeah, okay, that that looks leaf-like. 
Oh, that one a little less so. Um, so we've got a three zone of park, again, neighboring the eight, and I think that's a pretty good roll. All right, so we could do more industry. I will not do more industry. We could do residential zone, which I think sounds like a good idea. Or we can do, oh, more industry. Um, hmm. I mean, I suppose I could I could draw another four industry down here and just really just really go for it. I mean, that would be fourteen points for in from industry, um, which I suppose isn't terrible I just want I just need to try not to score many other points from other places the other way or the other the other option would to be draw a six size residential which is rather large I don't know if I want to dedicate six spaces to residential right away well yeah okay let's do it we haven't drawn one yet so um, when you choose the zone we choose whether to draw residents as circles triangles or squares all residents in the same role must be the same shape okay so we're drawing six circles squares or triangles we're going to score four points per type of resident zone that you have the fewest of so once we draw either squares triangles or circles we need to make sure to draw the other two and then we score points for the fewest that we have on the board so we're really banking on scoring more residential zones once we put these down, but I suppose let's do it and at least we'll be taking advantage of the civic zones as well because one of these turns one of these into a little smiley face and scores us three points at the end of the game. So I suppose we might as well take advantage of the fact that we've got civic zones on the board. Oh, well, there you go. There is another six shape residential and I think I will just actually go with that so we're just gonna put all of our houses over here um, quite well zoned I'd like to think away from the uh, away from the heavy industry um, maybe I should have put them here to border the ten but there you go now basically however many squares we get on the board is how many how many points we're scoring times four so again I want to be kind of cognizant of how many points I'm scoring so far. I think it's about... Oh, I don't know. <laughs> See, and that's, that's I think, my other problem is I don't have enough attention to uh, to actually sit around and calculate anything. Um, Alright, three monument zones. That's actually really good. Um, now then, where do I want to put them, though? Um, three monument zones will... Uh, so a three... Again, because they're not adjacent, uh, because they're going in that diagonal pattern, um, like the civic zones, um, will score as two points each. Um, so I think that is probably a good shout, unless... Um, oh, I guess unless I, unless I draw a one-size um, square residential zone. Um, but that seems like a bit of a weird waste. Yeah, let's draw the monuments. Um, I'm gonna put, so I'm doing, I'm, I'm adding four and one to make five, the monument zone, and I'm gonna put three monuments, I think I'm gonna put them here. So we get three little Arc de Triumphs right in, right by the, right by the factory row. You get to pass through them on your way to work from apparently what uh, I can only just, I imagine are slums. I mean, that's what, <laughs> You know, that, that's that's apparently what Pittsburgh has become. Yeah, a Victorian English city um, somewhere in the north. Um, so we've got six and six, so more schools possibly. So six and six being 12, we could draw a school zone of size two, although that won't be very, again, it won't be very helpful. We can draw more civic zones and get more points for that. But a, a size six civic zone just seems like... Well, actually, that's way too many points, isn't it, really? That's 18 points, and I'm really only trying to get 60, so I'm like almost like a third of the way. I must be at least half the way there with my points currently. Oh, I'm a bit worried about this space, actually. I need to remember to fill this space to get my 10. I suppose if I want to actually score that 10. Ah, see, this really... Like, I'm used to just, like, trying to maximize, right? Like, when you're engine building, when you're writing and rolling, you're just trying to make, like, the... Or deck building, even. You're trying to make the best of the best of the best, make all the synergy happen at once. And this is, like, well, actually, I need to, like, kind of self-sabotage a little bit in order to not score more than 60 points. Okay, let's let's think about this. So as soon as I put down a two-zone school... So I put it here and he Well, no, okay, say I put it... I don't think there's a way to do it. Okay, say I put it here and here, and I'll tell you what the energy symbol is in just a second. 
So say I put a school here and here, that's my two zone, right? So I'd have to join this one to one other square in order to make it a primary school, because primary schools are only two, two contiguous school zones. But I'd have to get the other one linked to at least two more to make it three contiguous school, contiguous school, um, three continuous school zones, um, because that's how you score a high school. Um, I don't know if I'm able to do that, quite frankly. Um, and so maybe this is just a throwaway, and I do just go for the 10, um, knowing that I'm not going to be able to make any schools for my undereducated populace. Um, and we'll just send them all to work in the factories. Yeah, okay, cool. I am a Victorian mill baron. Um, we've got some more parks, though, so that will be nice for everybody. Maybe? Actually, I don't know if we do have any more parks, do we? Um, unfortunately, I don't think I can fit a three shape of parks anywhere, which is... I can't fit a three shape anywhere. Okay, so second plan then, because I can only do one and one or three and one. I'm going to do three and one, which gives us monuments, and I'm just going to draw a single monument right here. Again, not adjacent, so it will score separately. So I've scored so far two, four, six, eight for monuments, ten for industry, so that's 18. Uh, what did I say? Seven for parks, so that's 25. 25 uh, plus 6 for my business, 31, maybe 41, 49. How are you supposed to fill that? That's really hard to fill, isn't it? This is going to require three ones. I don't think I'm going to get that. So I actually may need to start concentrating on... Well, if I can get, if I can get a nicely sized square residential, I think that's what I'll do. So I could build another business zone for six, and I could build... Uh, no, I can't. I can't build a three shape anywhere. I can't, so I can't put a business... I can't put the same uh, zone in this box here, in these boxes. So unfortunately, I cannot fit a business zone here, and it would make one continuous business zone and then two of one. So it would only score... It would actually hinder my points total. So in that case, I could, I could either... I could do another monument zone and just put that here for very limited scoring potential. Or I can do this and draw my first square residential zones. And that will get me... What will that get me? Eight points if they remain... If I, if I, if I remain two squares. So I need to draw some more squares, is what I'm saying, I think. Oh, that's perfect. Wow, that actually came out incredibly well, because we've got another residential zone of size 1, which means I can squeeze it right here. Now, as we get towards the end of the game here, I should talk about what happens when I can't draw anything. What happens when I can't draw anything is I have to draw an X in any available zone. Um, when I draw, an, I've got three maximum Xs. I've got three Xs to place. Theoretically, I could place them all down here and then score this 8, because X's and zones both count towards um, surrounding these uh, areas of natural beauty, or however they're referred to in the rules. Um, so I could theoretically put all my X's down here and have a nice little kind of red light district, I guess, south, south of the 8 zone. Once I've placed my three X's and I can't draw anything else, then that is game over. But I, I, have, I must keep zoning until that happens. So that's where this kind of like self-sabotage comes in when I'm trying not to score as many points as I can. So we've got a 9, which is industry size 5. That's not going to fit anywhere. We've got a civic zone of size 6. That won't fit anywhere either. Or we've got a school zone of size 3, and that won't fit anywhere as well. So then, what I can also do is if I put an X in this energy uh, zone, this energy square, once I place an X in there, I can actually draw one zone of my choosing anywhere on the board. And so I think just for the just for the extra points, I'm going to throw down another park. I like the park here because it's got some blank spaces next to it, so it will score me three points 
if it's next to both the reserve and the blank space. So as long as we don't crowd these parks out, I think we're going to be scoring pretty well. Not too well. Don't want to score too well. Um, all right, what have we got? We've got either monuments size 6, so there's nowhere to fit that. We've got industry of size 1, which I suppose we could do. Um, actually, that's not a bad idea. Or, or residences of size 3, which we cannot fit. So yes, it has to be industry. So 9 to the industry zone size 1, so I have to link it. I'm going to link it up here. Um, and that gives us a score industry of 11. Again, any industry that is not attached to the biggest group uh, gives us minus negative points. So if I'd have thrown that over here, say, um, it would have scored me negative one. As it is, it's attached, we're good to go. Pittsburgh is, is a sprawling industriopolis. That's not a word. Another double, it is a or, or a six, and we can fit those there, can't we? So what do we, let's give this some consideration. If I do a business zone of size two, say here, I will then have three business zones of size one, and so I will not score any points for business zones sized one. If I put it here, I would have one business zone of size seven, um, oh no! It would no. Of course, it would. It would be attached. So I would have one business. I would have one business zone of size eight. So I would score three points for that zone. I suppose maybe that's my best option. Either way, I'm losing. Either way, I'm losing the points. Right? I think that's. I think that's the. Especially if I put it here, because I won't be able to attach it to anything. If I put it here, I'm losing points for my park and. And from my other business zone. So yeah, I think. The only way to do it is just to expand it, uh, which kind of sucks, but there you go. So now we've got one continuous business zone of size 8, which will score me 3 points. All right, very good. On we go. And we've got a 1, a 6, and a 5. Well, we certainly can't fit a 5 shape anything anywhere at this point. We could fit a 1 size school. But there'd be nothing to do with it, really. <laughs> um, I could put it here and make a high school, but it wouldn't score because it doesn't have a. I don't have a primary school. And if I put it here, I would have a primary school, but that doesn't score, and I don't have a high school. So, um, yeah, not that helpful. What else could I do? I can't fit a six size anything anywhere either. So I suppose my school is my only option. Um, I I suppose I could also put it here, um, just to fill up my eight. Now might be a good time to do a points tally, but you know what? We're just going to wing it. I think I think I'm kind of on track to get about 60-ish, but I'm not I'm not entirely sure. Um, what's that? A civic zone of size one? Yeah, all right. I can I can I can get down on that. That's fine. Or I suppose I could do a monument zone. No, I can't. I can't fit a size four. No. So it has to be a yeah. Okay. Gosh, I'm I'm getting kind of lucky slash unlucky with the rolling of ones. I guess let's just throw a civic zone down here. I'm thinking this is supposed to be a golf course, maybe? Yeah, so a civic zone down here. We've scored the eight points. I think that does get us pretty close to 60. So hopefully these are, this is something I can't place and we can end the game. Um, which I think it is um, because I can't fit a three shape anything anywhere. I can't fit a six shape anything or a five shape anything. So I'm going to have to place an X. And so I'll place an X over here. Um, I don't want it to affect my parks because I'm scoring good points for my parks right now. And 6, 3, and 3. Again, nothing to be able to place, so I am going to place another X. And we've got our red light district actually right by the residential area, so a nice money maker. So that's it. That's the game. Um, we are, we're, we're all done with placing our zones. We, we've rolled, we've placed We've came, we've seen, we've conquered, etc. So now it's time to add up some points. So again, referring to this kind of scoring sheet up here, if a park zone, it will go top to bottom. So if a park zone is adjacent to a blank space or a reserve, it scores you one point. If it's adjacent to both, it scores you three. Note, X's are not blank. So 
you are adjacent to a blank space and a reserve. So are you, so are you, so are you. So we've scored 12 points for our parks. Pretty good. A monument zone scores two for each group of monument zones. And so because they're not adjacent, they are considered individual groups. And so we've got one, two, three, four. And that will score us eight. So that's 20 points already. We're going to score three points for each group of business zones that are a unique quantity. Well, we've only got one group because we had to join them together at the very end there. So we're going to score three points for business. Residential, we are going to score four points per type of zone you have the fewest of. Well, again, that is squares. So we've got six circles, six triangles. We've got three squares. So we're scoring three times four, again, which is 12. So what's that, 35? Okay. Um, for civic zones, each civic zone, each civic zone turns any one residential zone into a smiley face. So I suppose we'll take the circles for that. And we've got three, four civic zones. So one, two, three, and four smiley faces. Each smiley face scores three points. So that's another 12. That's what, 47? Ooh, we're going to come pretty close, you know. Um, what have we got for industry? 11? 11 industry. Um, we're not losing any points for industry because they're all in one group, so that's 11. Schools. We are not scoring any points for schools. We are an uneducated populace, um, and I suppose that's how we like it here as mayor. Um, that is going to be zero. Um, actually, this is where we overshoot, isn't it? Because I've just scored 18 points for my zones. Oh, damn it. I think I've gone way too high again then. Nothing for minus industry and nothing for the minus numbers because we have zoned um, we have zoned on these on these squares, so nothing minusing. So what have I got? 23, 35, 47, 58. Darn. <laughs> I've done it again. 58 plus 8 is 66. 76 points. And that puts us firmly in the clerk level. <sighs> I've how have I messed that up so bad? I thought I was doing so well. Well, I suppose I th yeah. I mean, I guess I was doing well, but doing well in by way of getting lots of points rather than actually winning the game. So if I hadn't finished this off, maybe I would have been better not finishing this off. Yeah. All right. Well, seventy six it is. Um, it's not. It's not a. It's not a massive amount. I suppose over. No, that's quite a bit away, isn't it? Sixteen points is pretty bad. Well, Pittsburgh has a new city clerk, so just watch out. I'm rising to the top. <laughs> that is uh, is going to be our video for today. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you're enjoying these PNPs, these prints and plays. I'm having a lot of fun with them, um, and I've I've come across a little another little kind of treasure trove of them um, online. So I'm going to be doing a few more over the coming weeks, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Let me know how you get on with Pencil Park. Fun little game good stuff all around if you are new here do consider subscribing um there will be solo board game content coming out every week and uh yeah drop the like i guess i think that helps something with the channel that'd be awesome thank you so much for watching again and until next time i will see you later